So there's controversy about you leaving. People think that there's something nefarious. And now Leo's not here, Director <gasps> Leo. So people are going to think there's something up with our whole staff. Because this is the new Leo. <laughs> this is Adam, everyone. Welcome, Adam. So Leo's not dead? <laughs> I mean, he could, be in, he could be in his right ditch, now. as far as we know. <laughs> Leo is not dead. Adam just wink, not at the camera, so there's confirmation. Thank Leo you. is not dead at <laughs> all. I mean, period. We don't know that. We don't know that. <laughs> Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Oh, tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. We oh. do it our own way. Yes! Oh, I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. Oh, my God. I did not do that. Now, here's Jason. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. I... Okay, is somebody's phone already going off? We're 30 seconds into the broadcast. 30 seconds. That's our record right there. Oh, my goodness. The damn open just ran. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. I love it. I love it. I was going to tell you something else, but I got to tell you, let me just tell you the story, because I usually tell the story uh, when we do the Q&A. I love moments like that, because I love live TV. For, if you don't know, this show is live. When we get to Chicago and Seattle, it's tape live. We don't start and stop. Anyway, I love live TV, because moments like that, I don't mind it. I think it's fantastic. The only time I ever mind it was about three years ago. Remember uh, Mervy Pervy Matt Lauer? Remember uh, Matt Lauer? <laughs> Remember when he was embroiled in that scandal? Well, and the, the scandal had just, about five years? Yeah. And, uh, uh, the scandal had just broke, and guess who we booked on The Jason Show? Ann Curry. Oh. Now, Ann Curry was here to t talk about anything other than Matt Lauer. But of course, even though we're not a new show, you guys would rip me if I didn't ask Ann Curry her feelings, because remember, the story had just broke, and I mean just broke. Okay, so picture this. I'm talking to Ann Curry, and we're in what we call a two box. Here's Ann via satellite, here's Jason. And I'm getting ready to ask her a very serious question about Matt Lauer, you know? And I don't ask a lot of serious questions. This show is ridiculous on purpose. I got ready to say, so Ann, what do you think of, and I didn't even get the words Matt Lauer out of my mouth, when a woman's phone uh, from the top row started going like this. Ruff, ruff, ruff. <laughs> the loudest dog barking ringtone you've ever heard in your life. Anne's looking around like this. I'm looking around. And the woman, it was his, and it kept barking. She couldn't figure out how to shut it off. It was one of my favorite moments in eight years. But we're going to make today a better moment. Let's get started. Rolling, Leo, here we go. My buddy Kendall is off uh, this week. Please welcome back the OG sidekick, Shane Wells, everybody. Okay. How you doing, friend? I'm good. You look lovely. I was embracing body. Uh, body. Embracing body? <laughs> Barbie. Oh, Barbie. Barbie, Barbie. okay. Oh. <laughs> embracing. Oh, em also embrace your body, you Embracing. Guys. Do it. Embracing, yeah, embrace your body. That's right. 
<laughs> Embracing other people's body is our late night don't show. Do that. That's right. Yeah, don't do that. It'll get you sued. Um, okay, so what I was going to say over there, can I ask you a question? You're married. I am. I'm married. Let me ask you a relationship question. Okay. It's. I, 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 We're going to start another conspiracy. Yeah, okay. Is there anything that you watch? that drives your husband crazy? Like most of the stuff. Okay, yeah. Like Bachelor, all that like garbage reality. Okay. He doesn't get down with that. Audience, this is what I was gonna say before my friend uh, uh, made a great moment. I was gonna come out and say, I think I'm divorced now. I think I'm single, yeah. I think I'm divorced. Uh, and, and I think Colin divorced me because... <laughs> I can see what's on your screen right now, and I'm a little thrown off. I've been making him watch on TLC, My Feet Are Killing Me. And I love this show. Thank you. Thank you. That's a show? The audience is split. I'm getting booed by 40% of them and cheered by... So this show is about pedi uh, 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 podiatrists, uh, and they work on foot, like uh, freaky feet, just funky, freaky feet, weird conditions. So let me just give you an example. What I, why I brought my iPad out here. Uh, let me read. Let me. No, <laughs> I'm not going to show nervous. anything, Jeff. I'm just. I mean, <laughs> Jeff's over there having litters of kittens. I'm not going to show anything. I know this is a breakfast show. I know this is. Okay. But I'm just going to read you the titles for some of these episodes, and then you're going to understand easily why Colin is divorcing me. So here we go. <laughs> the season premiere of this season, the title of the episode, My Thumb is a Toe. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for laughing at that. Number two, the second episode of the season, Hammerhead Foot. Hammerhead Foot. A smell from, no, episode three, a smell from hell. Oh, yes. Okay. And then let me get to the season finale here. <laughs> Horse heels. Horse heels. Yeah. I'm obsessed. I can't stop watching it. Colin, I swear, he gets so mad at me. He can't look. He puts his face down. The dogs run out of the room. But I can't. I'm obsessed. It's my guilty pleasure. He needs his own TV room. Well, yeah, we have other TVs, but I mean, I just, yeah, I drive him from the room. But it was we, a good run you guys had. We had a great one. Yeah. We've been married, yeah. We had a good run. Yeah. I can't hey. wait to hear you with the, like, therapist. That's right. Ten years is a good run, everybody. It really is. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Adam! I wasn't joking, by the way. Just programming note. Uh, director Leo is not here today. He's fine. It's just a day off. We have new director Adam today. So Adam's doing a great job. Yeah. Let's start. Unfortunately, I'm going to start off with some sad news in the world of entertainment. Tony Bennett has passed away. The singer, yeah, happened earlier this morning. The singer known for classics like uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. I'm not going to sing it. Uh, San Francisco was still char uh, topping the charts in 2014 when he performed a duet with Gaga. Uh, a lot of you know Mr. Bennett was diagnosed with Alzheimer's uh, in 2016, but only retired from live performances when he, uh, in 2021. Mr. Bennett was 96 years old. I, I, I was talking about this. This broke during uh, my radio show where we also talk about pop culture. I just want to give you a fun fact about Tony that'll make you realize, wow. First of all, he signed his first contract, music contract, in 1949. He has been a star since the 50s, since the era of Dean and Monroe and Clark Gable. He's been a star that long. Another thing that'll make you go, ooh, Tony Bennett was one of the first guests on Johnny Carson's debut on The Tonight Show wow. in 1962, yeah. I mean, to be an entertainer and to cross every demographic and age. Young people know him because of Gaga. Then he did a duet with, uh, I forgot who in the 90s. He had a run in the 90s. He's just, it's amazing. He's an icon, a music icon. He is, and he lived a really long, full life. So you're like, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Check. Oh, Amazing. God. I'm going to be happy if I get to, to, to 50. You know what I mean? It's like, I, check, yeah. please. I'm good, you know? You don't have much left. I mean, I'm coming up on 49 in like a week, so yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> this is 49 right here. <laughs> Next in the dish, Vanna White will continue to be Vanna White, at least on the primetime version of Wheel of Fortune. So Deadline is saying, uh, reporting, there's the headline, she has inked uh, her deal with Sony to return for Celebrity Re Wheel of Fortune, the primetime one. Her deal for the regular version is still in limbo. According to TMZ, she's asking for half of what uh, Sajak makes, which would equal $15 million. Uh, yeah, hello, she should have that. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, she has made $3 million a year for the last 18 years with no increases. Who's her agent? I, I know. Do Fifth, better. Seriously. Get I bet she makes money. more money. I'm not even making a... I bet she makes more money from her yarn business yes. oh. than she does from Wheel of Fortune. I didn't know about her yarn. She business. sells yarn. Yeah, she sells yarn. Here's what I'm... This is what I'm going to say. I mentioned Ann Curry. This is not a knock on Vanna. Here's what I think is going to happen, and, and, and I think longtime wheel watchers are not going to like this, so prepare yourselves. I don't think she's coming back to the main Wheel of Fortune because I just don't think she is. If you're Sony and you're Ryan Seacrest, you're starting a new era, you're starting a new generation. Do you really want Ryan to come out with Vanna and then like three years Three years later, you got to go through this transition again. I think they're going to rip the Band-Aid off because people are already going to be mad. People don't like change. I don't like change. You don't like change. They're already going to be upset that Pat's gone, so they're probably going to go like this. Okay, just change everybody. And, and Ryan is going to bring in somebody new to turn the letters, and then Van is just going to have celebrity Wheel of Fortune. I think that's what's going to happen. You know what they're going to do? They're just going to hire her daughter. Does she have a daughter? Vanna's daughter? Yeah. No, the, the rumor was Pat's daughter, but no, oh, no. Because it's all nepotism in Hollywood. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it is, yeah. Just keep the money in the family. We have a lot more to come. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Back. glad you're here. Welcome back to the show. John Stamos was on Hot Ones this week, and like most stars, 
Girl, he really <laughs> struggled. Look at this. You're taking it better than I am. <clears throat> this one's never easy for me. Look at you. I'm humbled on this side of the table. You're nailing this co-host uh, audition. You think? Yeah. It gets hotter. It's, yeah. It's sneaking up. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh yeah. Now it's now it's yeah. show. <laughs> now I get it. Mm -hmm. I know. Do anything? I've never seen anyone try that move. No. No. <laughs> I know. I know. Never easy. Never easy. That's eight. That's eight. That's eight. So I understand that you once outbid Michael Jackson what? for one of the original Disneyland signs. I can't hear. There's steam coming out of my ears. Of all the Disney ah. memorabilia. <laughs> John is a yeah, big fan of Disney. Can I ask, what witch in a tree did he make a deal with? How does he still look like that, for heaven's sake, right? I thought you were going to talk about the guy who created the show where they eat hot sauce and he's now a millionaire. Oh, well, that too. Right? That show, there's, no, seriously, that man, that Jeff was just saying, that has to be one of the most popular shows airing right now on, on TV or internet. That gets millions of views. And why is it so fun to watch people in so much pain? I don't know. I enjoy it so much. But get ready, because a week because a week from today, on his final day, we're doing that to producer uh. Ted. That's right. <laughs> the wheels are turning. That's right. It's time for a special serving a hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Audience, give it up for our friend, Jacob Wasserman from TMZ. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Jacob, let me ask you. J Jacob, let me ask you. Would you go on Hot Ones? I don't have the stomach for it. I, I can't really eat spicy food the way I used to, so I don't think that's the show for me. The way I used to? You, you, Jordan, you're... I'm, I mean, you're, I'm uh, growing... I'm getting older, Jason. Okay. I can't eat spicy food the way I can. What could. are you, 26? I mean, what do you mean? 25, but... Oh, but, yeah. my God! <laughs> Jacob! Anyway, uh, back in the good old days when I was 22, yeah. Back in my hot Cheeto days, yes. That's right. <laughs> Fresh off, God, I love you. Fresh off the news of her divorce, Ariana Grande Latte is already moving on. Who's she dating? She is dating one of her co-stars on Wicked. This was a huge shock to so many people, but his name is Ethan Slater. He plays Bach in Wicked, and they've been dating for quite some time. We're being told that they've been dating for the past several months, and it's so interesting because Ethan here not only plays Bach in Wicked, but he was also SpongeBob SquarePants on Broadway. He was nominated for a Tony. Uh, you see these two here. This photo surfaced just a couple weeks back, uh, but I, I have to say, I mean, it was just shocking a couple days ago. We were revealed that uh, Ariana Grande was splitting up with Dalton Gomez, a real estate tycoon here in Los Angeles, now going off with Ethan Slater. Uh, it's, I think a lot of people are very surprised, but they look happy. Every jar has a lid, you know, I just, yeah. <laughs> next, next up, Wee Man. Wait, am I reading this right? Wee Man has a message <laughs> for Disney. Is this Wee Man from Jackass? This is Wee Man from Jackass. What uh, happened? And yes. So, so he, uh, so if you haven't seen, there are some photos that emerged of the new filming of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So we talked to Wee Man because he had some pretty strong opinions about the new filming. If you see these photos, you'll see that it is not seven little people that are filming, but seven, I'll say, not little people. Um, and and Wee Man had a lot to say about this. He felt like it was wrong because Disney should be giving these roles to little people instead of people that are maybe average height. And he said that these roles should be reserved for little people, which is contradictory to what Peter Dinklage has said, saying that these roles t typecast little people. But Wee Man sees it the opposite way. He says that Disney should just completely scrap this and give the roles to little people. Yeah, two things. First, the title is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Number two, nobody is asking for a live-action Snow White. There's not a single per And I love Disney, yeah. but no one's asking for this. 
I, I completely agree with you. I, I don't know why they make all these remakes. Just, no. Isn't the whole idea to make new movies, new ideas? Yeah, I'm with you, Jason. Yeah, hi-ho, hi-ho, moving on we go. <laughs> uh, Tupac, uh, Tupac has been dead for years, but police are not done investigating his murder. Tell us about the raid that happened. So this happened on Monday night in Henderson, Nevada, and you have to check out this video on TMZ.com because you'll see that there are cops flooding this house. Now, it's a little bit tricky when I can tell you who this house belongs to, but just stay with me. So this, the suspect who is widely considered the person that killed Tupac Shakur, his name is Orlando Anderson. He has a nephew named uh, Keefe D. And this house belongs to Keefe D's wife. So many people think that maybe Keefe D is involved in this investigation. But regardless, you can see the video here. We were told that tablets, laptops, among other things, were taken away. And I mean, hey, they had to have pretty good evidence because they had a search warrant here. And I actually spoke to members of Tupac Shakur's family, and they were absolutely shocked by this. They had no idea that police were still investigating. So I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. Have a good weekend, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First off, it's not Tupac. It's uh, two, two, Tupac is what you would find right here if I lost about 30 pounds. Right here, just right here. And Tupac had an eight pack, yeah. Wow, I looked real square right there, yeah. Tell me more about Tupac's murder. <laughs> I looked very old, together. lame, and white, yeah. You said it. <laughs> next in the dish, the trailer for the next Marvel movie is out, The Marvels. Uh, it features uh, Brie Larson. She's back as Captain Marvel. Uh, the staff says this looks really good. Let's take a look. She's entangled our light-based powers, so we switch places whenever we use them. Strong theory. You can absorb light. I can see it. And Kamala... Who's Kamala? Hi. She can turn light into physical matter, which I have never heard of. I could totally show you. No! She's targeting every planet we call home. I would never choose to bring anybody into this. You are not the only thing standing between this and the universe. Oh my god, we're a team. Marvel hits theaters in November. That's what I this what I think is going on. You know, uh, uh, Marvel movies, superhero movies aren't doing well like they used to, you know, se seven years ago. I think what's happening is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear it from, from folks, that they feel there's so much homework you have to watch and do before you watch one of these now because it's all connected. So people that are maybe motivated to go, they say this sentence or they ask this question, do I have to see everything else to see blank? And I think that's why people are unmotivated now to go to these uh, movies. Uh, I just it just hit me when I was because that looks great, but I'm law I haven't seen a lot of the Marvel movies, so am I going to enjoy that? Because there's plot points from all different movies that you have to know to fully understand that movie. But when know. you're in one and the audience starts getting excited because a character showed up and you're like, oh, I don't know, if we're excited yeah. about this. Is that two pack? Is that two pack, two -pack here? <laughs> Next in the dish. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. The networks are loading up their fall programming with reality TV because, hello, there are no writers or actors. Uh, and Bethany Frankel has had enough with that and is calling for her fellow reality TV stars to show some solidarity. Now, look, you may instantly go like this, oh, whatever, but listen to part of what she had to say. Reality TV reckoning, the new Bethany clause. 
Reality stars are the stepchildren, the losers, the mules, the pack horses, the ones that the entertainment industry is going to rely on right now to carry the water and do the heavy lifting when real stars, real A-list Hollywood is on strike. The issues are different than the ones for actors. We are not actors. We are not playing other people. We are not saying the words that are written for us. We are exposing ourselves, our families, our lives, our children. Look at Raquel having an affair. Her life is pretty much ruined, and at what price? Reality television exploits affairs, bankruptcy, falling off the wagon, not really having what you say you have, saying something inappropriate, risking cancellation every single time the camera goes on. She, I mean, she's not wrong. Bethany went on to say she, her alone, has generated millions of dollars, but has never made a single residual. As a watcher of these shows, Bethany, that, uh, I don't always agree with everything Bethany says. I, I am, I'm a huge fan, but this point, she's absolutely right. All the catchphrases, you know, from her and Nene on, uh, uh, you know, bloop, and then uh, Dorinda, clap, uh, and then, you know, Bethany. Oh, no, I'm just saying she has generated buzz for Bravo and she will for years but they get nothing you know she got paid like a couple thousand dollars for the first season of Housewives uh, and Bravo continues to make money off her she makes a good point this is why they like reality shows though. because they're yeah it's and they that's, start by paying pennies people are just wanting to get their foot in the door and then their lives box. get ruined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's get to our let's get to know our final JVIP of the week. It's Candy from Baldwin, Wisconsin. Hi, Candy. She says that she loves how real we are. Uh, we all are. Uh, she's not a fan of hearing "fake it till you make it" kind of stuff. Candy also <laughs> loves the Hallmark movie reviews and fish out of water segments. Well, thank you. Oh, look. I think that's me in that picture. Anyway, Candy gets a, it was good to meet you back then. Uh, Candy gets a Jason Show mug in her to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> Touchdown or a fumble? My review of Netflix's hot docuseries, Quarterback. That and more on this Friday edition of The Jason Show. Stay right there.
Welcome back. David Bowie, Rod Stewart, and at one time, my dad and Ellen. Uh, what do all these people have in common? They had some pretty epic mullets in their heyday. <laughs> I just never thought my dad and Alan had anything in common, but okay. Uh, and our next guest wants to join the ranks. Audience, give a big round of applause for Carter and his mom, Linda. Hi, buddy. Okay. I was, I asked you this in the break. When you, you started growing it out, how long ago? About two years. Okay, when you started, when you started, you're like, you know, I'm going to grow a mullet. Did, was there somebody that you, you saw that you wanted to duplicate? Was there a mullet that you saw that you thought, oh, I want that haircut? Yeah, my friends, they had it when I started playing hockey, and I was just like, this looks cool, and I just wanted, I just wanted to grow it out. You wanted to grow it out. Okay, now when you started, though, did you think that eventually you would be in this contest? Well, once I didn't really know about the contest until I started like growing it long, and then when I, when I kn knew about it, I just wanted to try it out and see what would happen. Yeah, and then you you entered the contest. Now, what were you thinking uh, as a mom? Were you were you like, okay, did you find the contest or did? No, he started growing the mullet, and then somebody said, oh my gosh, there's this kid who won this contest, and so we started looking at this, the kid from the kid from last year. Yeah, and. Carter was all in. He's like, I I'm going to do this. Yeah. So I mean, if that kid I can said, win, you can win, I Carter. Said, I said, for heaven's sake, yeah. He kept growing it, and it just grew on him, and it became kind a of thing. Like who he is. And is so, it, so I was all in, too. I'm like, okay, let's go. So, Linda, is this contest, uh, I am not familiar with the mullet contest. I, uh, <laughs> my, I, should, I should have actually shown a picture of my dad, because people say, look, but my dad had... Oh, Carter, my dad had a mullet uh, like twice as long as yours. It was, but it was the 90s and it was a different era. Anyway, um, did you, uh, when, when, you, when he started, is it just, the contest itself, is it just adults, Linda, or is it uh, adults and kids? Oh, it's a whole big deal. So they just finished up and wrapped up with the female mullet. And then moved on to the kid mullet. Oh, and so there are oh, oh there are phases. different phases. <laughs> yes. I couldn't love this more. Look at this. Oh my goodness! What now? When Carter? When were these taken? How long ago was this? Um, that was probably I don't know, maybe a little over a month ago. Yeah. Okay, had, and it's we had to you know we had to <laughs> go in. Carter, look at you. You have better you have better publicity photos than I do. Look at those. So this photo he did he actually did a hype video with USA Mullet Championship. The guys there was probably a handful of people there, and there was a whole video that was done. He went in downtown and like did, did a, a hype photo video. shoot. Yeah, you, yeah. It's it, and the organization is called the USA Mullet Association. Mullet Championship. <laughs> I couldn't love this more. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't. What do you what, what, what do you win? Do you know? Um. So the prize is you get the title of the mullet champion. Yeah. Small it. Um. You get five grand. Oh. And then and then you get um. I think a trophy. You get to keep a trophy. Good. That is fantastic. And five grand, a trophy, and then now do you have to? <laughs> Is it like pageants? Do you have to give up the title at the end of the year and then, then like you're gonna take it from that other kid, right? Or yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How old was that other kid? Was he from here? They're the same age and he's from Menominee, Wisconsin. Oh, so, so this area. Actually him and Carter met at that video and so they've kind of like been in contact a little bit, but it's fun. It's like mullet pin pals. I love it. I know. The it, great thing about it though is like it's all in good fun, and it yes. is, you know, but the chair, like, you can also vote and donate, and all of the proceeds go to Jared Allen's um, Home for Wounded Warriors. And Isn't that so, great, guys? Yeah. I mean, we're having fun with this, but there's a really... It's, it's a win. It's a way. win, yeah. yeah. There, we're having fun, but there's a great component yeah. to it, and it's the, the, the charity component. So, in the competition, do you have to do anything? Or, I mean, do you have to, or you just stand there... <laughs> Or, 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 or is it all online, like the voting process? You don't have to go in front of a panel of judges or anything, do you? No, but no. there's three rounds, and the first round drops to top 100. There's over 900 contestants, so the first yeah. round drops to 100. The second round drops to uh, 25, and then the last round, whoever's the most votes wins. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. 
Uh, let me let me tell you, the people that watch this show, they're very devoted. I always joke that if we ask people to go rent a zebra, they'll go rent a zebra. <laughs> so no matter what we, they're good people and they'll do whatever we need them to do. So uh, how do, uh, Linda, how do people vote? So there it is right there. Okay, perfect. So the key to the whole voting thing is like getting the QR code or it's all social media, really. I mean, yes, he has been promoting himself. Like we went to Dick's Sporting Goods and he was out there at the shoe department saying, can you vote for me? Like, Atta boy, he's, Atta he's, boy. He's been doing, like he's been campaigning for himself and it's teaching him to be, um, you know, marketable, but also r respectful. Yes. You know, he's doing it, he's not pushing, and if somebody says pass, he says thank you, have a good day, you know. Um, but yeah, it's really all about uh, sharing and, you know, getting the votes. We're gonna put this on social, so the QR code, we left it up for a good long time. We'll show this later, awesome. share this later on our uh, you. YouTube and our Facebook page. You all go vote. How many times can people vote, once a day? So they can vote once um, per 24 hours. Okay. So like, you know, and then on each device that they... Each device. Yeah. And then I need all of you to go to Apple stores and right. then vote for him on every device at the Apple store. Okay. The library uh, works. The library. Go to the library. Okay, we have a little We have a little uh, uh, present for you. Uh, it's not much, but we got you a moose from the 80s oh, and, yes. uh, and a comb from the 90s. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, thank you. He's going to win. Again. The QR code will take you right to the voting. No registration like one needed. Click. One click. It's so right. easy. It's like and we'll post all of this on social. Give it up for our buddy, man. This is great. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. That was good, my friend. You did great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was great. Uh, Carter was so good. Just like any little kid that's not used to being in TV, his mom said he was nervous. He was great. He spoke better than uh, some adults I've spoken to on this couch. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome back. First, it was Formula One, then pro golf and tennis. Well, now Netflix is out with a real-life series following some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. A lot of you told us about it. I started watching quarterback this week. Uh, and before I give you my thoughts, here's a little taste of the show. Now, these are three very different players. Oh, go. Golly. Each in very different situations. But they all have one common goal. 
to lead their team to a Super Bowl victory. I love going to war with you guys, man. And during the 2022 season, Go. they allowed unprecedented access to capture that quest. They don't know I want tape. <laughs> I got tape, brother. I got tape. The show. The show follows. The show follows Kirk Cousins from the Vikings, Marcus Mariota from the Falcons, and Super Bowl champion uh, Patrick Mahomes. And uh, I, I, I speechless. I, I love. I really like the show. I don't like sports, but for some reason, I love sports movies and I love sports docu series. I really enjoyed this, and I know, but and. I am really not saying this just because we are based in the Twin Cities, but I think the person that came across the best is Kirk Cousins. Um, he is very likable. I, when we had sports director Jim Rich on, who had just interviewed Kirk, you know, a lot, a lot of these celebrities like fake humility. Yeah. I, I didn't get any of that from Kirk. I thought what we saw was pretty darn real, and I liked that. In comparison, I'm just going to be honest. Patrick Mahomes rubbed me the wrong way. I, his, I, I, I and the, his voice. I, 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 I would, I would. You're spinning out of control. I had to fast forward past some, and I don't want to pile on because the internet. I don't like trolls. I don't like the trash that's online. Um, but so I don't want to pile on to her. I know there's controversy over. Patrick's wife, Brittany. Uh -huh. Here's what I'll say respectfully, because I don't want to add on. The internet is so horrible to her, whether it's justified or not. I'll just say she doesn't always come across well in this documentary, in this docuseries. It sort of fits what's been put out there about her. And so I thought yes. maybe this would make us see her in a different light. So far, it I'm does not. not. Sure it did. So far, it does not. And I say that again. I don't like the, the pitchfork of the internet. I, I, and that woman gets a lot of hate online. And I'm not going to sit here and be uh, add to it. But I'm just saying, as a review of the show, it, 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 this doesn't help her. Uh, now, Marcus, I like. He uh, seems like a good guy, too. It's just fascinating. You see, you know, I know they make millions of dollars. And I know, you know, no one ever feels sorry for, for rich folks. But you really see the balance act that these guys have to go through. You know, they, they're expected to do so much for their team. And then they're expected to, to do a lot for their home team and have the energy to do it all. That's what I got out of it. And, and Kirk displayed that balance, I think, the best. Now, Patrick was a, looks like a great father, too. But um, that's what I got of it. It was just the balancing act that these guys have to do. Yes, you have a lot of money. Yes, you have millions of dollars. But you know what? You still got to take the garbage out at night, yep. you know? And and I just thought, oh, it, it, it humanized these 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 sports warriors for me. You like this because it was a story and not a game. Yeah, a game that I do not understand. understand. I do not, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Touchdowns and I just, I look at the costumes. That's a good costume. That's about all I do. Yeah. That's how I watch football. Peyton Manning said this week that quarterback is already renewed for season two on Netflix. Huh. So I wonder who they're going to follow. Be. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Yeah. He,
<laughs> you barely made it, Aaron. You barely made it. Welcome back. Well, remember when I was loving on this audience earlier? Well, they're going to be mad at me in a few minutes uh, because I hope they're hungry. Because today, here's the deal. Today's National Junk Food Day, and that inspired us to do a game. Roll it. It's game time, everybody. Here we go. So, in honor of National Junk Food Day, we're putting members of our studio audience to a wonderful test with some candy trivia. Now, that sounds great, right? Yeah. Uh, well, if they get the question right, they're going to get a prize. Uh, but if they get it wrong, they must spin our bamboozle or bean boozled wheel and eat a jelly bean that may or may not be tasty. Okay? So let's welcome our first contestant, Allison. Where's Allison? Allison? Oh, way up there. Come on, Allison. Watch the stairs. Watch the stairs. Come on down. Be careful. Okay, Allison. Hi, how are you? Grab that microphone. Okay, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Question. What do the initials M and M stand for? Mars and Mickey, Mike and Marvin, Mars and Murray, or Mark and Matheson? Um, I'm gonna go with Mars and. It's either Mars and Mickey or Mars and Murray. Murray, you are right. Woo, yeah. <laughs> There's a little kid for you. Thank you. Get up there. Uh, darn it, Allison. I was hoping for a jelly bean right away. Where's Paul? Paul? Come on down, Paul. Aaron will help you down. That's the lovely Aaron. Right down here, Paul. There we go, Paul. Paul, how you doing, buddy? Good. Here we go. You ready, my friend? What was in the original name for Reese's? Penny cups? Silver dollars? Quarter Johns? or peanut butter nickels? I'll say penny cups. Get out of here. Get out of here, darn it! <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let's try. Where's, is it Mich Michelle? Michelle? Oh, Michelle? Oh, Michelle's over here. Oh, for a second, I thought, did Michelle go home? Did she get, she was scared of the game. Okay, come here, my love. Come here. You know I love you. Okay. I know, I know. You ready, Michelle? Grab that microphone. Oh, Lord. Okay, here we go. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Michelle, how many times does Mr. Owl lick the Tootsie Pop before biting into it? Two, three, ten, or D, the world may never know. Let's see. One, two, a three. A three. Okay, where's Chris? Chris? Come on, Chris! Are you gonna eat one? Okay, Chris. That shirt looks good on TV, though, by the way, buddy. Look at that. Okay, you ready? Chris, cotton candy was invented in 1897. What was the profession of the creator? Circus clown, author, dentist, shoe salesman. Circus clown, author, dentist. I'm sorry. Go ahead and spin that wheel. It was dentist. Go ahead and spin that wheel. Oh, oh my God. I'm very sorry. It's either going to be buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Okay. So go ahead and get one of the yellow ones. Maybe that one right there. Yeah, go ahead. Put that bad boy in your mouth. Let's see how this goes. Get out! One more? But no, forget it. We're making Aaron do this. Get down here. As punishment for not finding worse players. There we 
There we go. Hello, everyone. Hello, this is Aaron Schwab, our audience coordinator, and Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. That's right. That's right. Here we go. Really um, quick. You ready? Yeah. What is the highest selling holiday for candy? Oh. Halloween, Easter, Valentine's Day, or Christmas? I, 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 I think it's Easter. <laughs> We have two positions open here at the Jason Show. If you would like to apply to be a producer or audience coordinator, email us at jason.show at fox.com. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> By the way, I'm very proud of our interns. That segment that you just watched, produced by our intern Mason. That's right. So, I want to get our intern jobs, man. I got to get our interns jobs. It's time for the world's shortest segment. A change of plans for AMC theaters. Listen to this. Back in February, AMC announced it planned to charge more uh, for better seats in their theaters. Well, and, uh, and less for seats in the front. Well. As you could imagine, this backfired. AMC says it's going to drop the idea if it failed to, quote, catch on with us consumers. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. Instead, AMC plans to upgrade front row seats to make them more comfortable for movie fans. I have an even better idea. Uh, 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 clean things a little bit. There's an idea, yeah. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Get some Windex.
Jason. Monday, Shane goes back to only having one job. Kendall returns. <laughs> plus, Shannon hits the streets to talk to people in honor of National Tell an Old Joke Day. Ooh. And we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. That's all coming up on Monday. Thank you, my love. It's always fun to have you. Yeah, it's always, be back. You'll be back. be back. I know where to find you. I know where to find you. That's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. We'll see you back here Monday. Yeah.